Welcome to Renown Church. We are continuing a series looking at a book of the Bible every week, and today we are looking at the book of Song of Solomon. Depending on where you, which Bible you read, sometimes it's called the Song of Songs. And an interesting thing about this is that the way the Hebrew language is, there aren't many adjectives. So the best way to describe that this was the best song that was written, they would call it the Song of Songs similar to Jesus is the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And we know that Solomon didn't just write one song, he wrote many songs, because in 1 Kings chapter 4, verse 32, it says that he, wrote, he spoke 3,000 proverbs and wrote over 1,000 songs. What many people think, or what some scholars think, is that he wrote a song for every single one of his wives. But this one is the song that got into the Bible. So when we look at the, the book of Song of Songs, we've got to understand that it falls into the category of poetry. And some people used to look at this thing as an allegory. And an allegory is a work of fiction that has a hidden meaning. Pilgrim's Progress, for example, is an allegory. Others say it's an analogy, which is where there's an effect that illustrates another fact. And Jesus used this a lot. Jesus used to say, the kingdom on heaven is like, and then he would say, and he would take a fact and then describe it with another thing. Um, other ways that people can have used the, or described the book of Songs of Songs is it's a collection of love poems. No one really knows. And it's very challenging because it depends on how you view it. It depends on how you interpret it. And when you read through this, there are sort of a couple of main characters, but it could either be about Solomon and a Shulamite woman, or it could be about Solomon, the Shulamite woman, and the shepherd boy. So it's either about Solomon and his love for the Shulamite woman, or it's about a love triangle, which is Solomon, the Shulamite woman, and a shepherd boy who could have been like her high school sweetheart. And we read it with a typical Greek worldview in our Western world, where the Greek worldview has very much a black and white, where there's a spiritual and the physical, and they are separated. That's how the Greeks viewed things. They separated the spiritual from the physical. Whereas the Hebrew worldview didn't really do that. They said God created everything and that it was one good thing. So if we read it with a Hebrew worldview, we would understand the book of Song of Songs as an affirmation of sexual love within a marriage. So we've got to understand that. Um, so the key scripture that we want to look at is Song of Songs, chapter 8, verse 7. Many waters cannot quench love, nor rivers can drown it. If a man tried to buy love with all his wealth, his offer would be utterly scorned. And we're going to make two points from here. The first one is that true love lasts. And the second one is that you can't buy love. So let's look at many waters cannot quench love, nor can rivers drown it. So true love lasts. That's a fact we've got to understand. Is a saying that says there's no such thing as falling out of love. Because if you think you can fall out of love, then it wasn't love in the first place. This picture is an incredible depiction of what love is. Because love is not temporary. Love is permanent. And we've got to be very careful that we don't fall out of love or think that love is just a fleeting thing. Many people actually fall in love with the idea of love. And a great way to describe this is to look at puppies. People buy puppies and they fall in love with these puppies because puppies are just so cute. But then puppies grow up. And if you go to the SBCA, you'll realize that many people fell in love with a puppy or the idea of a puppy. But then when the dog got big, they didn't and they got rid of it. And we've got to be careful that we don't treat love the same. That we fall in love with the idea of love and the initial like, oh, it's so lovely. But then when it gets to the hard part and the conflict side of love, where we've got to deal with the real issues that we, we just get, we leave it and, we, and it, we think it's temporary. There's a saying that says, a relationship based on attraction will not last. And we've got to be very careful that we're not just attracted to the idea of love or attracted to someone because it make us feel good. We've got to realize that it's actually about love and loving people because love will last, will, is a long-term thing. Love is not a temporary thing. In the, and Solomon was says, if, if, if water can quench love, then it's not love. But true love 
lasts forever because not even the water can douse that fire. The second thing that we want to look at is love cannot be bought. The verse is, the second part, it says, If a man tried to buy love with all his wealth, his offer would be utterly scorned. And the scary thing is that many Christians try to buy God's love. And it's not necessarily a financial thing, although some people do think that if they give their tithes to the church, then God's going to love them. But they try and earn God's love by doing good things. And they, they try and fast, they pray, they serve in church, and they feel that because they're doing all these things, they're going to buy God's love. But you can't buy God's love. We've got to be very careful. When it comes to relationships, we've got to realize that you can buy sex, but you can't buy love. And we've got to be careful not to mix the two or get the two confused because they're very different. Um, the thing about you can't buy love, but you can cultivate it. In Song of Solomon, there's a lot of gardening terminology, but the book's not about gardening. But the, 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 the thought behind it is we can cultivate love. And so how do you cultivate love? There's a guy called Gary Chapman, and he's written a book called The Five Love Languages. And he says that different people feel loved in different ways. So there's words of affirmation, telling people how good they are, how much you care for them. And that helps people feel loved. There's acts of service, washing the dishes, make someone feel loved. Receiving gifts helps someone to feel loved. Quality time helps someone to feel loved. Physical touch helps someone to feel loved. What we often do, though, is... The way we receive love is how we give love. And if we want to cultivate love in a relationship, we've got to realize we've got to become students of the other person. We've got to say, how do they feel most loved? Not how do I give love, but how do they feel most loved? So for me, I receive love best by physical touch and gifts. A little chomp. If you buy me a chomp and you give it to me, say, Roger, I thought of you. I feel super loved, or you give me hugs, high fives, all that stuff makes me feel loved. Nicole, on the other hand, is quality time and words of affirmation. I can buy Nicole presents till I'm blue in the face, but she doesn't, she, she'll feel, she'll go, that's nice, but she's not going to feel as loved as if I sit, make time in my diary, and I spend quality time with her, or if I tell her how great she is, or if I wash the dishes. That helps her a lot. That's like her third one. Acts of service is great. So essentially, love is actively seeking the benefit of the beloved. So how do we go about doing this? There's, we, can you do this by yourself without God? Easy. I mean, when, when Solomon wrote the book of Ecclesiastes, he, he writes about two are better than one. When two are together, they can help each other. They can do much more work. They can do all these things. But then eventually he goes, but a cord of three strands is not easily broken. So we can by ourselves, just a couple can love each other, but when we add God into the picture, this love becomes so much stronger. As we grow closer and closer to God, so we're going to grow closer and closer to each other. So we need to make sure that God is an essential part of every relationship we have. If you want to know and get more about this and listen more and get a deeper understanding, you can hear Andy preach this message. You can go to www.renownchurch.com, click on the sermons link, and you'll find the following.